Hello, YouTubers and 3D printing enthusiasts. Well, a little while ago, I did some interesting tests with a Prusa filament that was filled with magnetite. Mostly magnetic properties, but I was curious as to whether or not it would shield for radiation, so I did some tests. And that was a really interesting video, and it did shield somewhat for radiation. After I did that video, I was reached out to by Prusa, specifically from, and I'm going to get his name wrong, I know I can't pronounce this right, and I'm sorry ahead of time, Andrej de Broda, I think. Uh, he, they saw my video, and they found it quite interesting and fun, and they asked me, would you like to do some more tests with our tungsten filament, which is PETG plastic filled with tungsten, one of the heaviest metals in the periodic table, and this filament is actually designed to print radiation shields. <laughs> and here it is, right here. This is PETG plastic, and it is 75% by weight tungsten. By weight. Um, yeah, because tungsten is really heavy. This, this is heavy. Believe it or not, that looks like it's, you know, mostly used up, but it really isn't. I haven't used much at all. It's This is about a kilogram. <laughs> It's, it's a little less because I've printed my shields, but it's very, very heavy. Um, and it's designed specifically for printing radiation shields. 75% by weight, I asked them about volume because I was curious, and I heard back from Shane LaHaye, who is a content team member at Prusa, and he said he checked with the materials folks, and the tungsten filament is about 20% by volume. So that answers that. So anyway, um, this filament is designed specifically for printing radiation shielding. Why would you need that? Well, in a lab environment, uh, when they're designing experiments and building apparatus for experiments, um, actually on my previous video I heard from a, a guy that does this, and uh, he said that, that we normally we would have to mold out sheets of lead into specific shapes to fit our apparatus, and something like this would be very useful in the lab environment. And that's exactly what this is designed for. Well, here's their product page on the uh, filament, and they talk about it being specifically for radiation uh, shielding. And they also have an announcement blog uh, where they talk about the release of the filament, and I'll put that link in the video description if you want to go and read more about it. But I'm going to do some tests, as I did before. Uh, I've got my Geiger counter here. It's a uh, GMC 320. I'm going to be using this with software on the computer to compute the averages. And for my radiation source, as before, I have my late 1950s uranium, depleted uranium glazed plate. Now, this is not Fiesta Ware, which is famous for this. This is a different brand, but it's the same era, and it uses the same technique, and it is plenty hot. So, let me set up the tests, and let's go find out if or how, how well Prusa's tungsten filament, designed for printing radiation shields, works as a radiation shield. As before, I'm going to be using my GMC 320 Plus Geiger counter. This has a Geiger-Muller tube in it, right along the bottom edge here, as we can see from this shot of the interior of it. Now I'm going to have it plugged in via USB to the computer over here, Presently, the Geiger counter is capturing an ambient baseline. The uh, radioactive plate is in the other room, far away. Over on the computer, I'm running Debian 12 for my operating system and the Geiger log software version 1.5. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you how I'm logging the uh, measurements. So here we are where Geiger log is currently sampling my ambient reading. I'm going to go ahead and stop the log. You can display the data in counts per minute or microsieverts per hour, which I will be using microsieverts per hour. And when I actually make the measurements, I will be taking 300 samples, which takes about six minutes. This has been running for a little while. We were at 2,766 samples, but I'm just taking an ambient background level radiation measurement. And as we can see here, my background level average here is 0 0.141 microsieverts per hour. I am in the southwest of the U.S. in Arizona, and I'm at 3,500 feet elevation. 
So there's a little less atmosphere uh, above me than there is down at sea level. That's why the ambient's just a little bit higher than it probably is in your location. So this is going to be my background level radiation. I will now take a screenshot of this chart, label it, and we'll go on to making the first real measurement. Now, in order to make measurements, uh, I have printed radiation shields. Now, as I pointed out, the, Giger, the Geiger tube is in the bottom edge of the counter. This is the control shield. This is regular old PLA. And what I've done is I modeled these up in FreeCAD. They're just a nice little pocketed rectangle shape. And these walls are printed solid, and the floor is printed solid. And this, in this case, they are two millimeters thick, walls and floor. And this sleeve will simply slip over the Geiger counter, obscuring the Geiger tube down here on the bottom, and then I will set it on the plate to make the measurements. Uh, since our minimum size here is two millimeters, I also printed a couple of two millimeter spacers. And the initial uh, measurement I'm going to do for the radiation level at the surface of the plate, unshielded, I'm going to put these on the plate and then set the Geiger counter on top of these to lift it off the plate two millimeters to compensate for any fall off that we get over that small two millimeter distance. Uh, and then I have the radiation shields. These are actually printed in the Prusa PETG tungsten filament. Again, printed solid, same model. The only difference is this is printed in the actual tungsten filament, PETG and tungsten. And I have also a three millimeter version, three millimeter thick walls, and then a four millimeter uh, version with four millimeter thick walls. You can really see the difference there in the wall thickness. This is heavy too. <laughs> Speaking of weight, let's compare the weight of the two millimeter PLA version to the two millimeter tungsten PET G version. This is the PLA version. And that weighs 16.23 grams. 16.23. Here is the two millimeter PET G tungsten version. Fifty six point three one grams. Quite a difference. Quite a bit heavier. OK, let's go measure some radiation. We are ready to start testing. So this is the uranium glazed plate. I have drawn a rectangle on here, so I will always be placing the counter in the same position on the plate. I'm sure there are variables in, in the amount of uranium in the glaze. So we're going to make the measurements on the exactly the same place each time. So our first measurement, I'm going to put the spacers down. We're going to be just measuring the raw radiation off the plate with a two millimeter gap under the Geiger counter. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the counter stabilize. It's counting up now, 800, 900 counts per minute, 1,000. As soon as I see that number stabilize, then I'm going to go over to the computer and actually start the uh, log. Okay, the counter has somewhat stabilized. It's bouncing around around 4,100 to almost 4,200 counts per minute. So over here on the computer, first thing I'm going to do is uh, clear the log file. So we're starting with no data. And then I'm going to start quick log here, which will begin counting. And you'll see the graph pop over here. Here it's showing us the number of records that it has counted. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change from counts per minute. And I changed it from counts per minute to microsieverts. And I want to turn on average. So now we have our average down here. And then I'm going to let it go for about six minutes or 300 records. Once I've got 300 samples, I will stop the log and we'll look at the average and that will be our measurement for the raw plate. And then we'll go on to, this, to the uh, shields. Okay, we're nearly done with the first test. You can see here we're records 294 and counting. I'm going to get up here to stop the log at 300. 899, 300. Okay, move the counter off the plate. 
and I will reset the counter in a moment. But I'm going to save this, snapshot this graph, label it, and then we'll move on to the PLA test. You can see we had an average of 27.21 microsieverts per hour on the raw plate with the two millimeter spacers. Okay, this is my control shield, the PLA, which should provide a little bit of shielding, but not complete shielding. So we'll bring the plate back in, put the Geiger counter on exactly the same position. There we go. And then again, I'll let it stabilize and then I'll start the test. And I will show you the results on the screen as we go. So this is PLA two millimeters. You can already hear the difference. Now the two millimeter PET G tungsten shield. I just reset the Geiger counter. You could hear it quiet down when it slid down into the shield. Wow. That's quite a difference. So again, I'll let this stabilize and then I'll start the log over on the computer. This is the three millimeter PET G tungsten shield. Not too much above background radiation now. It's being quite effective. And finally, here we go with the four millimeter shield. Wow. Okay, I'll let this stabilize and I'll start the test. So here are our results. No shield, just the two millimeter gap, 27.21 microsieverts per hour. For scale, a dental x-ray will expose you to about 10 microsieverts. So at the surface of the plate, you'd be receiving the equivalent radiation of 2.7 dental x-rays per hour. Now PLA reduced it a bit. We had about 65% effectiveness in shielding the radiation. And we only had 9.44 microsieverts per hour. That probably is an indication of the types of radiation coming off the plate alpha, beta, and gamma, and alpha particles are fairly easily blocked by paper, skin, materials like plastic. And since we had a big reduction, 65%, uh, with PLA, we can probably presume that in this case a lot of the radiation coming off the plate is alpha. I don't have the right Geiger counter to measure that, but this is an indication. But then when we get to the tungsten, two millimeters thick, holy cow! only 0.89 microsieverts per hour, 96.7% effective at shielding the radiation compared to our raw two millimeter gap sample. Quite a big difference, quite effective. And then as we move up in the thickness of the material, three millimeters, four millimeters, we can see that we're reduced to 0.52 and 0 0.50 microsieverts per hour, 98 and 98.1% effectiveness. Now, some notes on printing this material. I printed it on my Prusa uh, Mark IV S uh, with no problems with an open printer. The printing characteristics are much are very similar to regular PET G. Prusa does have profiles on their page uh, that you can download for specific settings for this filament. Uh, you do need to have a hardened steel nozzle. This is an abrasive material, and Prusa sent me one of their E3D Obsidian hardened steel nozzles and uh, you'll, you'll want that definitely if you're going to be printing this or any of the other abrasives like carbon fiber, glow in the dark, wood filled, or magnetite. Uh, there might also be concerns about uh, the longevity of the material under radiation since the plastic itself would degrade. So this is probably only useful for temporary uh, situations, maybe lab apparatus for experiments where you need specific odd shaped uh, shielding materials. Uh, long term, it would probably break down. Although, you know, medium term, if you had something breaking down, you could just print another. So there you go. No surprise, it works pretty well as a radiation shield. So interesting, interesting, interesting material. Probably one of the most unique filaments that we can print on our consumer printers. 
And as I said, you do need a hardened steel nozzle to work with it. What else could you use it for besides radiation shielding? Well, it's pricey, but it is, it's heavy. It's got some weight to it. So there might be some applications there where you need to print something with weight. Um, but aside from that, it's really highly specialized. It's, it's designed to be radiation shielding, and it works pretty well at that. So thank you very much, Prusa, for sending me some. I'm going to vacuum seal this and store it until I have another use for it. I hope the rest of you found that really interesting, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.